Well, welcome back. This is session four of Three Steps to a Solid Lifestyle. And I don't know about you, but I'm enjoying this. And this is so powerful. I mean, if somebody could just get this one series and do it, according to Jesus, they'll be solid. And the storms of life won't be able to take us out. So uh, let's open up in prayer, and then we're going to jump into today's lesson. So Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for what you're speaking to us about three steps to a solid life and lifestyle. Help us to see by the Holy Spirit what the Word of God is teaching us today in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, we talked about these three steps to a solid life. Come to Jesus, hear his sayings, and do them. But we talked about how Jesus didn't want us just to hear the gospel and come and pray a little prayer and then to uh, say, yep, we're saved now, so now we're solid. Well, of course not. Of course not. Somebody that just hears the gospel and prays a prayer did not do the sayings of Jesus. Jesus is talking about a lifestyle of coming to him, hearing his word and doing it. But how, do you, how does that practically play out? That's what this series is, Three Steps to a Solid Lifestyle. So we talked about three different kinds of steps, daily steps, weekly steps, and seasonal steps. So in one session, we really focused on daily steps. And then in the next session, we focused on weekly steps. And now we're on seasonal steps. In daily steps, we talked about every day listening to some of the Word of God, every day reading some of the Bible, maybe a chapter at least, and every day praying. I mean, doing those things every single day will make a difference in your life. And then we talked about the weekly steps, which are services. Come to church service every week, at least a service every week. And then groups come in a small group and fellowship around the Word of God and receive ministry and pray with one another. And then ministry. Everybody every week is called to do some kind of ministry. The Bible says every part does its share. So now we're turning our attention to seasonal steps. And so let's open our Bibles now. We always go back to the Bible, but I want to go to the book of Matthew, the last chapter in the book of Matthew. And we're going to look at the Great Commission of Jesus. And of course, it's also captured in Mark chapter 16. It's also captured in Acts chapter 1. But let's look at it here in Matthew chapter 28. And we'll come down to the 19th verse. And here's what Jesus said, very popular, but let's listen here in terms of the seasonal steps that Jesus talked about. He said, go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Now notice verse 20, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. So notice when he told his disciples, now this is just before he ascended into heaven. So this is the final conversation. And he said, now go into all the world. Mark's gospel says, preach the gospel to every creature. And of course, they need to do that to get people saved. But Matthew picks up that he also said, don't just get them saved, but disciple them, make disciples of all the nations, and he said, baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. That can be done very quickly. I mean, in 10 minutes, we can have you baptized. But this next part takes time. Teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. Well, Jesus spent three years with them, and now he's saying, go and teach other people all the things that I've commanded you. Well, if it took three years for them to get it, then it's probably gonna take at least three years for other people to receive it because the 12 uh, disciples or apostles, they were full time with Jesus. I mean, they left their jobs and they walked around with him full time. Well, the whole church can't do that. The church can't just quit all their jobs and follow along and become disciples. That's not what the Lord's saying. So in other words, it's going to take longer to disciple people over years in all that Jesus has commanded. And really, we could say, in the Word of God, in the Word of God. So let me give you the breakdown of seasonal steps, daily steps, weekly steps, and now seasonal steps. So 
for seasonal steps, we have discipleship, we have training, and we have fasting. Discipleship, training, and fasting. Now, I want to focus for a moment on discipleship. You know, every believer is called to be a disciple, but discipleship does not happen automatically. Discipleship has to be intentionally embraced. You have to lean into this. The root word for disciple is discipline. Discipline. In other words, there's a disciplineness that God's going to bring to us of approaching his word. You know, this whole lifestyle that we're talking about requires discipline. This is part of your discipleship to walk this out. And Jesus told them to go make disciples, teaching everybody to observe or to obey all the commands that he gave. Well, that's going to take time. That's going to take time. Now, I want to go over to one of my favorite passages in the whole Bible, and especially when we're talking about discipleship, Psalm 1. Psalm 1. And even though this is in the Old Testament, I'm telling you, I believe Psalm 1 gives maybe the best snapshot or summary of biblical discipleship anywhere in the Bible. There are some others that parallel it and uh, also do a good job of summarizing discipleship. But Psalm 1 is uh, by far my favorite, at least that I found so far. But let's look at it here. Psalm chapter 1, while I'm getting there, I'll begin quoting it. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. Verse 2, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, that's the Bible, and in his law he meditates day and night. Well, what will happen to a person that does that? Verse 3, he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth its fruit in its season, whose leaf also shall not wither, and whatever he does shall prosper. Folks, this is talking about a solid life. This is talking about a disciple. You remember Jesus said in John 15, he said, if you abide in my word, you'll be my disciples indeed, and you'll know the truth, and the truth will make you free. Well, that's in John 8, 31, 32. In John 15, he said, if you abide in my word, and, and my words abide in you, you'll ask what you desire, and it shall be done for you. By this, my Father is glorified that you bear much fruit. Well, here's talking about fruit as well from meditating in the word day and night. See, this is all the same thing. Old Testament, New Testament, it's all the same God, same truths that he's sharing. And so this doesn't have red letters, but let me tell you something. Jesus is the word of God. And these things are absolutely true. So I want you to notice once again in verse one, he said, blessed is the man. Let me say it like this. The blessed person, the solid person, the person that has a solid lifestyle, the person that becomes fruitful is a person who doesn't walk in the counsel of the ungodly. That means that here's a person that is disciplining themselves not to just let anything into their ears, not to just let anything into their eyes, not to just let anything into their heart, but they're focusing their eyes and their ears on the Word of God. So this is what we do in, for example, Operation of Solid Lies. We ask people to cut way down on the media that they've been taking in and increase dramatically the Word of God into their hearts and into their lives. So it says, blessed is, the man, blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the ungodly or stand around with sinners and so on. But, verse 2, his delight, he's not doing it as an obligation, his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law, he's meditating day and night. He's got the word of God on his mind. Well, how do you do that? I'll tell you how. Three steps to a solid lifestyle. And daily steps, listening to the word, reading the word, praying, weekly steps, coming to church every week, being in a small group, fellowshipping around the word, and then, of course, doing your ministry. And now we're on to seasonal steps, becoming a disciple. Now, what I wanted to point out here is, it says, verse 2, his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law he meditates day and night. Day and night. You remember the early church was meeting daily in the temple. Now, I don't think every single church member was able to come to the temple every day because, well, most of these people, they're farmers, they're shepherds, they have occupations. You know, uh, Jesus was a carpenter along with his father, Joseph. I mean, these people are not just lounging around all day with nothing to do. No, they have careers, they have responsibilities. 
And yet there were still people that were coming to the temple every day. Often they were traveling from other countries to visit the temple. And so while the disciples were there, they were ministering to whoever was there. Not everybody made it every single day. But nonetheless, there was an opportunity to be there every day. Well, in our a system in our society, generally people are coming to church every week, and then they can be in a small group, usually once a week. And then, of course, we have our daily routine in the Word. But, see, to really be a disciple of the Lord, you can't just occasionally visit the commandments of Jesus. You've got to get these into your heart all the time. Well, let's be honest, most believers don't do it. I mean, we read it, we talk about it, we know it, we can quote these verses, but I'd say 95% of believers or more just don't do it every day, much less day and night. See, well, how is it going to happen? Discipleship. You put yourself under someone who is a disciple of the Lord and understands these things, and then they begin to walk you through how to separate yourself from the counsel of the ungodly and give yourself to the Word of God. So, uh, I put this under seasonal, seasonal. And what I mean by that is, not every day of every year can you be in discipleship. Not every week will you be in this intensity under somebody else. But seasonally, we need to put ourselves in a position where somebody else is calling us to a higher standard, calling us to a higher level of living, calling us to separate ourselves and such. And so, in a sense, discipleship happens all the time through our daily steps, through our weekly steps. But I'm telling you, with all the distractions that happen in our society today and distracting believers, we need to have seasonal time where we really lean in where we take something like an Operation Solid Lives class and we just give ourselves and saturate ourselves with the Word of God. There's nothing like it. There's nothing like it. When I was a youth pastor, we loved taking youth to camp because we'd get them out of their environments, away from high school, away from their friends, away from their boyfriends and girlfriends often. And we just sit them in these services. They have fun in between, but I tell you what, just going to service two or three times a day during camp and just having the Word of God and the presence of the Lord there, I'm telling you, their lives were changed. And it was just an intensive, it was discipleship. And friend, every one of us need these things. In our society, the responsibilities, the traffic, the time that our conveniences take to manage and to maintain just don't afford people with the time. I mean, just to, to be on your phone and all the email and the texting and the social media and everything else. People are just consumed to, uh, in our day and age. Well, we need to have seasonal times, and I would suggest more than once a year, where you give yourself to discipleship. And this is so, so important. And we've had countless thousands of people give us testimony saying, man, when I got in there to an OSL class and gave those number of weeks and just set aside the media and saturated myself with the word, oh, I, I found a liberty. I got delivered from bondages. I got delivered from fear, alcoholism, drugs. I mean, we've heard so many testimonies. Well, that, that's what happens. That person will be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that will bring forth fruit. See, and if we don't do it, well, we're not going to have this kind of fruit. But if we'll do it, we'll have the fruit. So when Jesus said, whoever comes to me and hears my sayings and does them, well, this is part of it, that there are times where we really need to lean in and just completely be saturated by the Word of God. Discipleship, discipleship. Okay, so under seasonal, we have discipleship, training, and fasting. Let's go to training here. And I want to talk about training and fasting. I want to look at three verses quickly here. 2 Timothy chapter 2. Let's look at a verse there. 2 Timothy chapter 2. And while I'm turning, let me just quote it. Paul said to Timothy, And the things which you have heard from me among many brethren, commit these to faithful men who will be able to teach others also. 
who will be able to teach others also. 2 Timothy 2.2. 2. So notice the things that you have heard from me. So here's the Apostle Paul who discipled and trained Timothy for ministry, talking to now Pastor Timothy and saying, the things that you heard from me among many witnesses, commit these to faithful men who will be able to teach others also. He didn't say commit them to able men who will be faithful. He said commit them to faithful men who will be able. And so we're talking about ministry training. Listen, you're called to ministry, a certain type of ministry. You need to pray and ask the Lord, Lord, what ministry training do I need? It takes time to be trained. But oh, is it worth it <laughs> to put yourself in a position to be trained by the Lord and by other men and women who are farther down the road than you are. Have some insight, some expertise, some experience that will help you to accelerate in your competency and your character to do the ministry that God has called you to do. Well, let's look back over at the 20th chapter of Acts. We were there last session, but let's look again. Acts chapter 20, talking about training, training. And I think you'll see this very quickly from Acts chapter 20. Let's look again at the seventh verse. Acts 20, verse 7. Now on the first day of the week, we read this. Now on the first day of the week when the disciples came together to break bread, Paul, notice, Paul, ready to depart the next day, spoke to them and continued his message until midnight. Now what I wanted to point out here is, yes, we saw that they have a regular pattern of meeting on Sunday, the first day of the week as believers for what we would call today a church service. But this was a special occasion. This was not just any church service. We have the Apostle Paul here with us. This is our father in the faith. This is, this is the one that, that oversees us. And so this is not a normal church service. This would be something like a conference. This is a special guest that has come in. It is our beloved Apostle Paul. And so we're not just going to have church for the typical uh, amount of time. This thing continued until midnight, and there's nobody complaining. There's nobody complaining. And so this is more like giving themselves to a conference, and everybody's still there. The Bible says there were many lamps. In fact, look at it. It says they were, in verse 8, uh, there were many lamps in the upper room where they were gathered together, and in a window sat a certain young man named Eutychus, who was sinking into a deep sleep. He was overcome by sleep. Well, Paul's preaching until midnight. That's a long message. Let me tell you, I used to feel bad for preaching long messages, but this passage of scripture encourages me every time I read it. So notice this. It says, this young man was sinking into a deep sleep and he was overcome by sleep. And as Paul continued speak, speaking, he fell down from the third story. Wow and was taken up dead. But Paul went down and fell on him, embracing him and said, do not trouble yourselves for his life is in him. Now, when he had come up and broken bread and eaten, notice, and talked a long while, even to daybreak, Paul's still talking. He's still ministering all the way until the sun comes up. Talk about a long message, a long service, a long time of ministry. Well, his heart loves these people. And this is a special occasion. This is not a typical meeting every week. This is more like a conference, but I want you to notice it's in the Bible for our learning so that we can understand that there are occasions when we have some special speakers, some special times to separate ourselves, to be trained, to be taught, to really saturate ourselves with the word. Yes, discipleship, but also training. We'll look also in the 17th verse of that same chapter, and notice it says, from Miletus he sent to the... Uh, to Ephesus and called for the elders. See, so he didn't want to stop in Ephesus, you remember, but he called for the elders. And what happened there is he had a whole ministry training conference and he ministered to them. In fact, let's just pick it up down here. Uh, oh, let's come down to verse 20, 25. Let's see. It says, and indeed, now I know that you all among whom I have gone preaching the kingdom of God will see my face no more. Therefore, I testify uh, to you this day and I am, that I'm innocent of the blood of all men, for I have not shunned to declare to you the whole counsel of God. Therefore, take heed to yourselves and to all the flock 
among which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers to shepherd the church of God, which he purchased with his own blood. So notice what Paul is saying. Paul is saying to these pastors, they're called elders, but they're pastors. He said, shepherd the flock of God. But notice he said to these elders, he said, I have not shunned to give you the whole counsel of God. I've been doing ministry training with you. I've been teaching you doctrine. I've been teaching you ministry. And now I've called you from Ephesus to this pastor's conference. And now I'm pouring into you again and, and telling you how to shepherd the flock of God. And he taught them several important things there. So you can see here that we see in the Bible, these are just a, a few occurrences, that there are regular opportunities for discipleship, for conferences and such. And this was not just typical daily time. This was not just a typical weekly time. These were special times for extra training, conference conferences, pastors' conferences and such. Well, if they needed to do it, then we need to do those things. And so at our church, we have something called Rock Conference. We have the BFAM conference, Be Fruitful and Multiply for leaders and such. We have women's conference, men's conferences. See, all these things, they take sacrifices, but boy, when you lean in, the Holy Spirit does something that doesn't happen on just the daily routine or the weekly routine. These are special times. And they took advantage of them in the book of Acts, and we need to take advantage of these today. This is all part of what Jesus said, whoever comes to me and hears my saying, see? And so this is part of what we need to do when these things occur seasonally. They're not every week, but they do happen seasonally. And then let's just look at this last one, fasting. And notice in Matthew, turn over to Matthew chapter 6. I want you to see something that Jesus said. Matthew chapter 6, and then we'll close with Acts 13. Matthew chapter 6, and of course, this is the Sermon on the Mount. And Jesus began to teach about prayer. Prayer, Matthew 6, and come down to verse 16. Matthew 6, 16. And notice Jesus said this, Moreover, when you fast, do not be like the hypocrites with a sad countenance, for they disfigure their faces. Notice, that they may appear to men to be fasting. Assuredly, I say to you, they have their reward. But when you fast, anoint your head and wash your face so that you do not appear to men to be fasting, but to your Father who is in the secret place. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you openly. I want you to notice a couple of things here. First of all, in verse 16, moreover, when you fast. He didn't say if you fast. He said when you fast. Every believer is called to have times where we tell our flesh, hey, I'm not feeding you right now. I'm going to feed my spirit. I'm going to fast. I'm going to pray. I'm going to seek the face of God. And he said, when you do that, don't do it to impress people. In fact, don't even let them know that you're fasting. And that doesn't mean you get over religious about it. And, you know, you're fasting. And somebody said, are you fasting? I don't want to talk about it. You know, that's ridiculous. Okay. If somebody asks you, just say, yes, I am. But don't try to get them to ask you. Don't try to make yourself look like you're fasting because he said, then that's, that is your reward. But if you'll just do it between you and God and what you're saying to the Father is, Father, I'm seeking your will. I want your way in my life. And if you'll fast that way, he said, your Father who sees in the secret place will reward you openly. I don't know about you, but I like that. I like that. But it's between you and him. In other words, it's of a sincere heart. You really are looking to him to be your reward and not to the praises of men to be your reward. So Jesus said, when you fast. And then let's just look quickly at Acts 13. Acts 13. This is all over the New Testament in various places we could turn. But in Acts 13, you'll notice right at the beginning, it says about the church in Antioch. It says, now in the church that was at Antioch, there were certain prophets and teachers, and it names five men, starts with Barnabas and ends with Saul, who is Paul. And then it says, notice in verse 2, as they ministered to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Spirit said, now this is the point. When we take time, we tell our, we tell our flesh no. And, and we don't let our flesh eat 
and get relaxed, we say, no, you're not going to eat. I'm going to press in to hear God. Well, your spirit becomes more sensitive because your flesh is not wanting to lay down after you eat. Your spirit is, is available now to hear more readily from the Holy Spirit. So it says here, as they ministered to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Spirit said something. Now separate to me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. Then notice this, after the Holy Spirit spoke, having fasted and prayed, they laid hands on them and sent them away. This was a lifestyle in the early church that we would have times, they would have times of fasting and prayer, telling their flesh, we're not going to eat right now. We're going to focus on the things of the Lord. And friend, let me tell you, you may not be fasting every day. You may not even be fasting every week, although you could. But seasonally, there need to be those times where we set aside food and pleasure and convenience and what our flesh loves and say, no, I've got to fast. I've got to pray. I've got to seek the Lord. We've always encouraged people at least annually get before the Lord and say, Lord, what are the roles you've called me to play in this season? And Lord, what are the goals? What, what things should I be focus, focusing on in each one of those roles? You'd be surprised how roles that you have played, like maybe you were a coach of uh, Little League before. Well, thank God. That's a wonderful thing. You can influence people, love people, serve people, but maybe that's not what the Lord's called you to do at this season. And if we don't ask and seek him, we'll just keep doing the same things. And we think we're following the Lord, but we're not. We're just following routines. Or just because somebody praises us and saying, you're a great coach, or you're great at this or great at that, we tend to be encouraged by those things. So we keep doing them instead of coming and fasting and praying, and asking the Lord, Lord, what do you want me to focus on? See, so these things are so important. Daily steps, weekly steps, but now seasonal steps. And with the seasonal steps, we must lean into discipleship. We must lean into training for our ministries and to be enriched in the Word of God. And we must give ourselves periodically to fasting and prayer so we can hear God clearly and we can make those important strategic adjustments in our lives as the Holy Spirit speaks to us. Praise God. We're talking about three steps to a solid lifestyle. And let me tell you, there's... There is no one that can't do these things. Every one of us can do these important steps. So, Father, thank you for speaking to us, leading us by your Spirit, showing us these things in the Word of God. Now help us, Lord, to do them. Daily steps, weekly steps, and seasonal steps. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Well, we've got one more session, and it's going to be the climax We're going to tie it all together, and so don't miss the next session.